This is my 2019 Jaguar F-Pace SVR. 4,600 pounds of pure British muscle. Obviously, I'm not Dan, but I'm gonna be talking about this car today. We're gonna meet up with him later to see what he thinks of it. So you can't talk about the Jaguar F-Pace SVR without talking about its five liter supercharged V8, producing 550 horsepower and 502 foot-pounds of torque. Now this car shares the same engine with the Range Rover Sport SVR and the F-Type SVR. The only difference is this car produces 25 less horsepower. I believe that's due to a pulley change and a tune. But the noise that comes out of the back of this car is insane. The good thing about supercharged V8s is that the power delivery is very linear. It's not like turbo cars where you gotta wait for boost to kick on. The one complaint I do have about this car is that there's no supercharger whine. Kind of like Dan Z06. Makes a lot of noise in the back, but nothing from the engine. Unlike Dan Z06, this car has a proper ZF8 speed gearbox. Upshifts and downshifts are super crisp, and there's zero delay. I also think Dan would approve of these paddles. For an SUV, this thing handles exceptionally well. Chuck it through a corner and you'll be fine. Steering feedback is nice, progressive. Ride quality, however, varies. I got this car with 21 inch rims and the ride quality was terrible in my opinion. And then I switched over to 22 inch wheels and somehow the ride quality got better. This car does sit on the heavier end of the scale compared to its competition. And I'm talking about the X3M, GLC 63, Stelvio Quadrifoglio and Macan Turbo but this thing packs the most punch. Somehow, the BMW, according to magazines, is still faster, but I guess we'll find out when we actually get one in our hands. For what it's worth, I did beat a Macan Turbo the other day. This interior is sick. Suede headliner, everything's wrapped in leather, carbon fiber trim, really cool bucket seats that are heated and cooled, and actually really comfortable. The dash, Jaguar did a good job on, full digital problem is, is the heads-up display is terrible. It looks like it's from 1994. It only tells you your speed and the gear. And if you have the navigation running, it tells you where to turn. And that's it. I chose this car because, well, one, I think it looks really nice. Two, it sounds incredible. Three, not many people know about it, which I think is unfortunate for this car. Because this is pretty special. Jaguar making an SUV with 550 horsepower and it sounds like hell broke loose in the rear. But anyway, let's get to the acceleration test. So to get the best performance out of this car, put it in dynamic mode, put it into drive, and then shift it over to sport and let the car do the shifting on its own. Let's give it a try. Unfortunately, the weather took a turn for the worst, but I finally arrived on the scene and it looks like all the hard work was already done. Of course, Sean might be a little biased because he owns the car, but like me, he's owned quite a few cars, so I respect his opinion. See, I find that the F-Pace sits in an interesting market space. The compact performance SUV is sort of a new niche, but it's catching on pretty quick. When he first brought it to Slipstream, I was in awe. Satin red, gloss black wheels, I had no idea this thing even existed. I actually thought it was on the same level as the Cayenne Turbo at X5M, but at 186 inches long, it's a good bit shorter. It's hard to argue looks on an SUV, but in this category, I still find the GLC 63 to be the most well-dressed for the occasion. That car has undeniable presence, especially from any frontal angle. But at the same time, you can't deny that the Jaguars got everyone beat with their 5-liter V8 making 550 brake horsepower. Then again, it does cost 10 grand more than the BMW and the Mercedes. It's about the same price as a Stelvio Quadrifoglio. The only car more expensive is the Macan Turbo, which unfortunately is likely the slowest of the bunch. But truthfully, though my experience with British cars is limited, there's something special about that interior. And I agree with Sean, it's a place I wouldn't mind spending some quality time in. And I think that's what I'm gonna do right now. I don't have much to contribute to the conversation that hasn't already been said, but since I had just come from driving the Model X, I think it's fair to say that though they are different animals, they actually handle quite comparably. 
This Jag handles better than some sedans I've driven. But of course, it's not something I'd bring on the track anytime soon. Let's take a look at those times now. So the Jaguar F-Pace SVR, where does it stack up on our fast list? Let's start with the standing metrics. Real life 0 to 60, 4.03 seconds. Not bad. Real life 0 to 100, 9.81 seconds. Also pretty fast. It did the quarter mile in 12.22 at 113.73 miles per hour, which is respectable for an SUV. But how about the metrics I actually care about? Well, this Jaguar did our 4100 test in 7.01 seconds. That's faster than a Mustang GT and a bunch of other entry-level sports cars. But it looks like it did get bested by a Model X P100D here. No worries because it catches up by putting down a 6 to 130 time of 12.03 seconds, which is faster than a Tesla. And right there with an M2 competition. Not too shabby, right? But now I'm curious what its competitors can do. Oh, and for my non-US viewers, here's the 100 to 200 kilometer per hour time. 10.03 seconds. Interesting that it beats the M2 here, but loses up top in the 60 to 130. I've always felt like Jaguars were like rich old people cars, but this thing has totally changed my mind. I'm honestly pretty impressed. Then again, I haven't driven too many performance SUVs. But what do you guys think? Is this an X3M killer? Do compact performance SUVs even make sense? Let me know in the comments below. Yep, and action. So the good part about the supercharged 5 liter V8 is that the power is all linear. There is no turbo lag, there is no lag at all, and you just smash the throttle and just explode like a firecracker. That was terrible. First time on the channel? Don't forget to check out some of my other stuff. I produce all sorts of cool content with performance cars and acceleration tests, so if that's your jam, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell icon for new episodes every Thursday. Thanks for watching.